I've been talking to Dr. Bruce McLucas, who is the founder of the Fibroid Treatment Collective here in Beverly Hills, about fibroids, about some of the options for treatment, and about some disturbing news stories we've been reading recently about an instrument called, I believe it's a power morselator that uh, people are saying might spread cancer during fibroid surgeries. Uh, it's good to see you again, Dr. McLucas. The story really got, uh, I think the expression is legs, uh, and it started being circulated uh, back early in, in this year, in 2014. Uh, a, a younger woman uh, had a hysterectomy using the morselator for fibroids. Turns out that when they examined the tissue after the uh, laparoscopic procedure using the morselator, there were some cancerous cells in the, uh, in the tissue. Now, her contention is that uh, because those bits of tissue were morsels uh, taken out of the bigger tissue, it was divided up as you removed the tissue, that her chance of surviving this terrible disease uh, was diminished a great deal. And that really brought the, uh, the next step, which was a Food and Drug Administration hearing. Yeah. So now what is the Food and Drug Administration uh, saying and or doing about this? Well, this was recently in the news. Uh, the uh, Food and Drug Administration, or we'll just call it the FDA, convened a, a group of uh, interested people, both gynecologists and like me, uh, members of the public, uh, and manufacturers who make the uh, instruments. Number one, uh, the Food and Drug Administration asked for more study from a larger group to see how likely a woman would be at risk. Uh, and they requested the, uh, a warning to be placed on the morselators that are still being sold, uh, saying that uh, you know, there's a small chance that cancer could be spread. And then more so, they asked for all of us as, as gynecologists to have a consent from our patients that says we've discussed the small possibility that we could be dealing with a cancer when we think we're dealing with a benign tumor. Now, uh, at the Fibroid Treatment Collective, uh, the way that you treat fibroids primarily really is through a method called embolization. Are these morselators used in that process at all? Not at all. We don't, we don't break up the tissue. We keep the uterus intact. We starve the fibroids by removing the blood supply. Should fibroid embolization not work, especially in a woman in the menopause, we'll know it within two weeks and we'll be able to help that woman pinpoint the chance that that may be that rare cancer. Now this, this device itself, I mean, is this, uh, in your professional opinion, an, an isolated incident? I think we're all gonna learn out of this experience. The morselator is just a tool. Now, unfortunately, Pat, we don't know, there's no imaging test, there's no blood test. There's no biopsy that can say to us, uh, you do not have a cancer. It's only the odds. Right, you can look at certain risk factors we talked about before, and most of them have to do with women being menopausal. In the menopause, not taking estrogen, then a rapidly growing uterus would be a real concern. And, but in general, uh, if we can take that morselator out of the equation, like we do in fibroid embolization, uh, we don't use scalpels, we don't use, it's not a surgery, it's an outpatient procedure that, that leaves the uterus intact and works for 90% of our patients. We've done more than 10,000 women at the Fibroid Treatment Collective and wow. well over 90% of those people have successful outcomes. Uh, and I've heard you explain how that process works and uh, I think it, it, it made sense to me when you talked about actually starving the fibroids? The fibroids, uh, like every bit of tissue in our body, gets oxygen from the red blood cells that the arteries bring down to that tissue. Uh, once we block that artery, which is what we do in fibroid embolization, there's no blood, there's no oxygen, and the fibroids shrink. 
Now the uterus has another blood supply, so the uterus is fine. A lot of our patients have had children after this procedure. It's, a, it's fine. It's, pregnancies are great. And we talk about menopausal women, but also there are a lot of young women who are having this issue as well, aren't there? A lot more young women, uh, a lot of women in their 20s, a lot of women who know that if they had a myomectomy, the fibroids would definitely come back again. After embolization, they're gone forever. I know people have a lot of questions about these issues, and I know one of the things that you do at the Fibroid Treatment Collective is to have seminars where people actually can come out and get some of those questions answered. And I would imagine that people are asking a lot more about the morselator as it hits the news. After the FDA conference, uh, some of the response was very rapid from manufacturing. A company called Johnson & Johnson has stopped making the morselator and they've recalled all the morselators that they've made. So that's one thing. Uh, one of the big insurance companies out east has decided they're not going to pay for any surgeries that uh, use the morselator. But fortunately, that's not going to be an issue with anyone who chooses embolization as a, a way to deal with the issue of fibroids. Uh, embolization is uh, celebrating its 20th anniversary. Uh, and. Uh, Millions of women throughout the uh, world have had this procedure now, and, and safely so, yeah. We'll continue this discussion. Thank you for watching.